there's only one subject uh, to kick this interview off with, and that, of course, Ben, is the Olympics. They're about to start. Are you ready? I think so. Uh, it's it's a once a uh, once in a lifetime event, at least in France. Last time was uh, was over a hundred years ago. Spending a lot of time preparing, uh, even before I arrived at Air France KLM, which was five and a half years ago. So I think it's going to be a great show. They, it's they have, very exciting. <laughs> everybody's very excited, but there are some concerns around queues at Charles de Gaulle. I, I talk to American friends; they say the queues are still fairly long there. Um, you, there's concerns about what could happen potentially with strikes. The unions are still kind of rattling uh, and potentially could cause problems. Are, are you in? Are, are you confident that we're not going to see? any problems emerging? Well, we're not adding any more airplanes to our fleet for this summer. And most summers were well over 90% load factor. So in terms of number of customers that we're going to be flying through the two airports in Paris, CDG and Orly, that can be an increased number of passengers. The, the flows will be different. We'll have less customers connecting and more customers originating or destined uh, to Paris. But uh, in terms of uh, capacity and number of passengers, it should be about the right. same as last year. Are people avoiding Paris? Are, are business travelers avoiding Paris during this period? Are you kind of seeing a different mix? Definitely a different mix. Uh, we are seeing a reduction in the number of business customers coming in. But the summer, we always see that. This is right in the middle, end of July, early August. Uh, it's not a peak business period for us. Uh, but it is uh, I mean, a lot of volume. So what what, uh, what we think and what we see is uh, a lot of going to be a lot of pressure on the baggage systems because uh, we never have seen so many inbound customers. Uh, those are the types of things that are concerning us. But the airport authority, they've done what we see is a very good job of preparing. Are you worried about the unions? Well, France, it's, a, it's, always, a, it's always a focus on uh, organized labor. Um, you know, we have a good relationship with our 17 unions, uh, and a lot of them are excited as well. Uh, but with labor law in France, you've always got to keep the relationships up. So, so it can't be ruled out. So it can never be ruled out in yeah, France. Okay. Yeah. You, you talk about what, what is happening with demand. What does the demand picture look like right now? Uh, for the summer, it's strong. You know, we, uh, our airplanes will be full, from what we're, uh, we're foreseeing, uh, and we'll see how pricing works out. But uh, volume-wise, there should be no issue. So, okay, so you bring up pricing. Um, some of the low-cost carriers, Ryanair obviously is the, the example everybody citing at the moment, talking about maybe softer pricing over the summer, softer fares uh, over the summer. Any evidence that that's going to be a similar story for you? Well, at Air France, we're a predominantly long-haul carrier. Yep. So, you know, we're not a low-cost carrier. We do have our low-cost carrier at Orly Airport. But as far as Air France goes, uh, the traffic that we're seeing globally in all of our uh, segments is holding up quite uh, it's quite strong. Now, for, for Asia, we're still not back to where we were uh, yep. pre-pandemic. We've got this uh, inability to fly over Russia, which makes us less competitive than Chinese or Indian carriers. And so we, we have, we've, we've held back uh, putting in the capacity that we had at the same levels we had uh, before the crisis. Transatlantic's good, Africa's good, South America's good. Uh, but to, uh, you know, I hear some of the uh, some of the discount carriers in uh, intra-Europe are not able to reach uh, some of the, uh, you know, the, the increases in uh, yield that they were hoping for. We're seeing a little bit of that, but our Transavia unit is in growth mode, so right. we're not in steady state. What, what is holding you back right now? It doesn't sound like it's demand. Is it the availability of aircraft? We've spent a lot of time already at this conference talking about what's happening with Boeing and what's happening with Pratt & Whitney. Is that where the challenge lies right now? Is it the availability of staff? Is it what you have to pay staff? Where is the challenge that is, that is holding you back? It's a little bit of all of that. Uh, I would say at the, at the base, it's uh, not the ability to source staff for pilots or for cabin crew. We've got issues on the maintenance side. A lot of, uh, a lot of our maintenance employees left the industry. A lot of competition to keep maintenance staff. In France, we have Airbus, we have Safran, we have Talis. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, for, uh, for mechanics. Uh, so that is an issue for us. Uh, airplanes, on the wide body side, we have the airplanes we need. Uh, maybe one or two months late, that's not the issue. But uh, I would say it's getting the pilots in the right seat uh, because there is a lot of training. It's complex with the union rules that we have. There's a little, little bits of things here and there. But we are, I would say, if you look at our capacity, levels versus 2019, when you compare that to other European uh, airlines, we're sort of at the top. Are you, you talk about maybe a few aircraft being late, are you holding on to any older aircraft for longer as a result of that? A few. You know, we have, uh, you know, we've got 180 wide-body airplanes in the group. 
we've got maybe five or six that we're holding back a little longer. Not just uh, not just to keep a little bit of a reserve, but uh, but also older airplanes that were missing parts, uh, which is an issue from some of our suppliers. We've got at least some uh, extra airplanes for backup. I mean, that's one of the things I can I can I can add to our list of uh, you know issues and getting everything back to uh, to where we were is in the supply chain. We are uh, we are having trouble sourcing parts, sourcing parts for interior cabins, for engines, yep. uh, that type of thing. Um, let's talk about what's happening in the consolidation story. You've talked in the past about it being a must in Europe. It doesn't feel like the Commission kind of agrees with you that it's a must that we see consolidation amongst the, the, the European carriers. We're watching what's happening with ITA very carefully. It looks like Lufthansa is maybe struggling to get that deal over the line. Are you running the numbers on ITER? Would that be a fit, do you think, for Air France KLM? Were the Lufthansa deal to fall apart? Well, I think it's a, we are totally for consolidation in Europe. Uh, and when I say consolidation, I mean consolidation to compete globally. I think Europe is the most competitive region from an you know, intra-Europe or intra-region yep. intra perspective. I mean, there are so many low-cost carriers in Europe. There's no shortage of choice uh, for consumers. Where I think the, uh, the European Commission is, uh, is focused on, which we think is wrong, is ensuring that European airlines can compete globally. We are, I believe, disadvantaged because we are not able to uh, to get the economy to scale or to be able to maintain, uh, you know, a relevance compared to Gulf carriers, American carriers, and this is our concern. The focus that we believe is wrong. The focus should be. Are any of these transactions going to diminish long haul uh, competitiveness? And we don't believe they will. Just to come back to the to the ITER issue, I hear what you're saying about what the Commission's attitude is towards the approach they're taking, but if. Are you still open-minded about any of these? We've got TAP, there's Air Europa, obviously Luis is, is pursuing, pursuing what is happening there. You've obviously you've got the, the partnership coming up uh, with SAS. But are you still open-minded if, for instance, Carsten Spore over at Lufthansa doesn't see that deal go through? Are you open-minded still about maybe pursuing some of the other options maybe you haven't looked at yet? Are you running the numbers on some of these other transactions? Yeah. Well, look, we we run the numbers on any opportunity that we yeah. can see could be that includes uh, ITA. could be financially accretive. Uh, look, uh, the former Alitalia or ITA, we had an investment in them twice. Yeah, you know, KLM did, Air France KLM did. Neither one of them worked out. We looked at it a third time. Uh, it's a look. It's a difficult market when you look at the two airports in Milan. You look at Rome. There's a lot of foreign competition in Milan. Uh, it's a you know if there was a business case to be had, I think we would be pursuing it a lot uh, a lot harder. Now for our, our our friends or our competitors at Lufthansa, it's a different dynamic. They have a, you know, they have a different presence in northern Italy. You know the business case. I assume. I mean we're not going to see the numbers. I assume is uh, is very different to our. It sounds, own. It sounds like that's that's kind of still a no at this point. It's a it's well, a hard, it's a hard it would be a hard thing to you to get to work. In terms well, we we walked away from it. Yeah, uh, we did pursue SAS. We're very happy with how that's developing. Uh, it's exactly what we were expecting. We have a fantastic relationship with you know our partners uh, who are investing, co-investing with us, and we want to see that through. We don't want to you know take on too many things at the same time. Uh, as you brought up, there are going to be other opportunities in uh, in Europe. Uh, so we'll get SAS hopefully completed, and then we'll uh, keep an eye out if there are any other interesting uh, opportunities TAP for us. would be a more logical transaction for you, do you think? We'll see. I mean, the new government there, some, it was a big decision made that we were waiting for, and that was a decision to build a new airport. Yep. Uh, we'd like to know, you know, what is the transition uh, period going to look like? You know, yep. will, it, will it be uh, both airports remain open, or will the old airport, the existing airport, uh, close. That's very important for you know for any particular like a type, this type of transaction. 